Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing fine. Welcome to the session. Today we are going to start with Chapter 3 of Grade 6 CBSE and the name of the chapter is Taro's Revolt. So it's a story of a loving son who looks after his old parents. It's all about his dedication, his love, his affection, for which he gets rewarded by God. And when the emperor of his kingdom happens to hear about his story, he accepts his kindness and rewards him in one way. So let's get started with the story of this loving, loving son. A young woodcutter named Taro lived with his mother and father on a lonely hillside. Lonely basically means alone or you can say unaccompanied. All day long he chopped wood in the forest, though he worked very hard. He earned very little money. This made him sad, for he was a thoughtful son and wanted to give his old parents everything they needed. So there is this guy whose name is Taro and he is living with his parents and he's quite young. He's a woodcutter and he lives in a village in Japan. So every day he walks to work to cut chop wood. Chop basically means to cut up the wood in the forest. Though he worked very hard but his income was very less. Uh, with which he could just fulfill the basic needs of his family. But he wanted to do something good, something great for his parents. One evening, when Taro and his parents were sitting in the corner of their hut, a strong wind began to blow. It whistled through the cracks of the hut and everyone felt very cold. Suddenly, Taro's father said, I wish I had a cup of soup. It would warm me and do my heart go and do my old heart good. So here, say, what is soup? Soup is basically a beverage or you can say it's a rice wine. And it's a drink that is made from filtered and fermented rice. Apart from that, what does the word whistled mean? Whistle through. It basically means you make high sound by forcing the air through small hole. So if there's wind blowing outside and since there are some um, there are some cracks in the building so definitely you'll hear that whistling sound. So one evening when Taro was spending some time with his family so at that time when they were sitting in the corner of the hut so through the cracks of his hut cold wind starts to blow and that basically gives that feeling of uh, coldness to his parents, Taro's father especially. At this time, Taro's father wished for a cup of steak, which is a drink to keep his body warm. And Taro was sad as he could not afford the drink. He, his parents, his father was looking for a warm drink that will keep him warm, but, and keep his heart also in the right condition, but he couldn't afford it because he didn't earn that well. This made Taro sadder than ever. For the heartwarming, heartwarming basically means something that causes you feel happy. Heartwarming drink called Seik was very expensive. How do I earn more money? He asked himself. How do I get a little sake for my poor old father? He decided to work harder than before. So looking at the condition of his father, he decided he has to do something to take care and to heed to the wishes of his father. 
So he decided to work harder to earn more money. And he just wanted to make his parents happy. Definitely, he wished to provide seek, which is a drink to keep you warm during winters. But that needed a lot of money. Next morning, Taro jumped out of bed earlier than usual and made his way to the forest. He chopped and cut, chopped and cut as the sun climbed. And soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket. His mouth was dry and his face was wet with sweat. My poor old father, he thought. If only he was as warm as I am. And with that, he began to chop even faster, thinking of the extra money he must earn to buy the sake to warm the old man's bone. Now here, chop basically means to cut. He used to chop or used to split the wood, a wood into small sections. And what happened at this time? Now, the next morning, he decided to work harder and for that he had to wake up early next morning. He woke up quite early, went to the forest, made his way to the forest and he decided to cut more woods. So he chopped, chopped, chopped and the sun wasn't up by then. And later on when he continued to chop, the sun came up, the sun was out. He started to feel warm. The warmth of the sun started to heat his body. So he had to remove his jacket, take off his jacket. And, you know, his mouth was also getting very dry. His, there was sweat all over his face because he was working so hard. And then he thought about his father. He thought, maybe one day I'll make my father feel what I feel when I work hard. Not that he wanted his father to work hard, but he wanted him to experience the same warmth in his body because it was very cold for him. So in order to make him feel the warmth, he had to get him the sake. And in order to get the sake, he needed extra money. So he continued to chop even faster, continued with his work, thinking that I can make some extra money and with that extra money, I'm going to buy sake, that drink, to keep my father's bones and body warm. Then suddenly Taru stopped chopping. That was the sound he heard. What was the sound he heard? Could it be? Could it possibly be rushing water? Taru could not remember ever seeing or hearing a rushing stream. What is a stream? It's a small, narrow river. In that part of the forest, he was thirsty. The axe, this is the axe that he's using, the axe dropped out of his hands and he ran in the direction of the sound. So as he was trying to chop a lot and lot of wood that day, cut more and more woods. He was also feeling thirsty. So he suddenly, all of a sudden, he stopped chopping and he heard some sound. It was the sound of running water, rushing water, that's flowing water. And Taru recollected that ever since I've been coming here in this area to chop wood, to cut the wood, I've never seen a stream of water around. So is that correct what I am hearing? Is that the sound of flowing water in this part of the forest? He was very thirsty. So he dropped the axe off his hands and he went in the direction from where he could hear the sound of that flowing water. Taru saw a beautiful little waterfall hidden behind a rock. Kneeling at a place where the water flowed quietly, he cupped a little in his hands. Cup this, you make that curved shape in your hands. So this is the shape of cup. And put it to his lips. 
water. Was it water? Or was it sick? He tasted it again and again and always it was the delicious sick instead of cold water. So first of all, what is kneel? Kneel is basically, you take that position where you sit with your legs folded like this, right? If this is the body of that person, so he sits with his, let's say, legs, folded legs, right? Fall on one's knees. So, or maybe you, how you bow to someone. So now Taro, as he moved in the direction where he could hear the sound, he saw that beautiful little waterfall and that was hidden behind a rock. Not everybody could see that. He just tried to bend down and he tried to make a cup of his hand to get some water and taste it. And he was a bit confused if that was water or sick. So he tasted it again, again, continued to taste it to make to have clarity about things and every time he tasted he, his, you know, he, he was sure that this isn't water, it's the delicious sake and not the regular water that you get in the streams. So he found that the taste of the water was different and he realized that it was sake. Let's see what happens next. Taro quickly filled the pitcher. Now, what is a pitcher? It's a kind of a jug, like you can see this lady holding its jug, or maybe you can see a large container that's used to hold liquid. He had with him and hurried home. The old man was delighted, happy, with the sick. After only one swallow, swallow basically means you gulp it in. You consume it. After only one swallow of the liquid, he stopped shivering, shaking, and did a little dance in the middle of the floor. So what happened? He realized that it was sake. He got his pitcher out. He filled the pitcher with it. Pitcher means that large container to hold liquid. And he brought it along and gave it, offered it to his old father. After taking a sip of it, the father stopped shivering and even danced. So when you shiver, it basically means you are having that uncontrolled motion. You get chills. That afternoon, neighbors stopped by for a visit. Taro's father politely offered her a cup of the sake. The lady drank it greedily and thanked the old man. So as the lady might be quite greedy, which means she might be a person who's having, you know, who wants to grab everything. So somebody wants to grab everything or grabby or um, you can say very, very thirsty to have something. So and thank the old man. Then Taro told her story. Uh, then Taro told her the story of the magic waterfall. Thanking them for the delicious drink she left in a hurry. By nightfall, which means sundown, or you can also say by the evening, she had spread the story throughout the whole village. So that day, afternoon, a uh, neighbor stopped by, which happens to be a lady. And Taro's father humbly offered her to have a cup of sake. And that lady drank it greedily, showing intense power to have more and more, more and more of sake. As if she drank it for the first time. And then she, when she was done, she thanked the old man, Taro's father. Taro made, him, made her sick and told her that I got sick. It's a, this magic waterfall. And the lady left. She thanked them and she left and she was quite in a hurry. And when, during, you know, by night, this lady, she managed to spread the rumor that 
in rather than news throughout the village. It was spread. That evening, there was a long procession. Procession, you can say a long march, one people come, one person coming after the other, of visitors to the woodcutter's house. Each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sea. In less than an hour, the pitcher was empty. So, now that day visitors came and Taro continued to offer the seed to all of them. And by evening, the pitcher was empty. It just took less than, or less than an hour to do away with whatever was there in the pitcher. Next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than the morning before. So he went to work even before he generally used to go. He carried with him the largest container or pitcher he owned, for he intended first to first of all to go to the waterfall. When he reached it, he found to his great surprise all his neighbors there. They were carrying pitchers, jars, buckets, anything they could find to hold the magic seat. Then one villager knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink. So now everybody came to know about the news and they all started to kneel down. Again, it means fall to one's knees. And he drank again and again and then shouted angrily, Water? Nothing but water. Others also tried, but there was no sail, only cold water. So all the villagers, they went to the waterfall with their containers the next morning, even before Taro could manage to reach that place. And he saw them from quite a distance that everybody is trying to taste the water. But they found that it was only water. So they were very angry at Taro. Everybody was carrying their containers to get as much sake as they could. But then they realized when they consumed it that it's just cold water. There's no sake in it. We have been tricked. Tricked basically means we've been fooled. We've been misled. Shouted the villagers. Where is Taro? Let us drown him in the waterfall. But Taro had been wise enough to slip behind the rock. When he saw how things were going, he was nowhere to be seen. So now they were so angry. They were angry with Taro and they just wanted to suffocate him. Drown him basically means suffocate and kill him in that water. So they wanted to get hold of him, kill him in the same water, but uh, Taro had to save himself from the anguish of the villagers, from their rage. So he managed to save himself, put himself, slip himself behind the rock so that they don't come to know where he was. And uh, they all started to wonder that we can't see him, where he, where is he? Muttering their anger, and disappointment, the villagers left the place one by one. Muttering basically means when you say something, speak, like whisper. Mm, what, 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 like, mm, why, why? So, Taro came out of his, uh, from his hiding place. Was it true, he wondered? Was the sacred dream? Wonder basically means think about, ponder. Once more, he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips. It was the same fine sake. To the thoughtful son, the magic waterfall gave the delicious, wow, sake. To everyone else, it gave only cold water. So here, thoughtful basically means to that considerate, caring attentive. So now everybody was in 
rage and anger and they were looking for Taro. They were very disappointed. Where was he? They were all... And then when they left, when they couldn't find Taro, Taro came out of his place where he was trying to hide himself. So he started to think that was it true that something that he got yesterday was just cold water and not the same? So, and it was just a mere dream. So once again, he tried to get hold of some of the water in his hands and put it to his lips to taste it. But he realized it's the same fine sick. It's not the water. So now the magic waterfall had done its magic. For that caring, considerate son, it used to change its water to sink. And for all others, it would just make sure that others get the cold water. So the story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of Japan. He sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him. Rewarded basically means give him the prize or pay him. Rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This, said the emperor, was to encourage all, encourage means cheer, boost, to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. So as the news reached the ears of the emperor of Japan, he rewarded, he gave prize to that considerate, thoughtful child, Taro, and he gave them 20, he gave him 20 pieces of gold. And he even rewarded by naming one of the most beautiful fountain in the city after his name. And it was all done to make sure that all the other children in his kingdom follow his footsteps and respect, obey their parents. So that's all for the session, guys. In case you like, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.